My name is Brian Price. This is my presentation for my paper for Atlantic World on the uh, Stedman's Suriname. My paper was, uh, the uh, premise of my paper is that the regiment was, uh, that of Stedman was involved with, was not uh, necessary um, to be sent to Suriname to quell the maroon um, rebellion. The re re Maroon Rebellion uh, had already been pretty much taken care of by the uh, Rangers, uh, the Black Rangers, or the uh, Niger Vizcorp. I'm probably saying that wrong because it's in Dutch. Um, and uh, uh, prior to their arrival, uh, the regiment had difficulties, uh, to say the least, in uh, Suriname, and, and the main reason for the difficulties was environmental, uh, is the premise of my paper, that yes, that there were difficulties uh, um, with tactics, uh, they had difficulties with the government uh, of the colony itself, having differences with the, the colonel um, between the governor of Suriname, Jean, uh, was it uh, Netvu? and uh, the colonel of the regiment, um, which was, uh, his name escapes me, I'll get back to it. Uh, oh, there it is, Henry uh, Forgo, For Forgoat. Again, in a, a language I'm obviously not pronouncing properly. The, um, the rangers, uh, or, or the regiment, I should say, having come from Northern Europe and were made up of different European, they were all, uh, mercenaries basically, working for uh, Holland at the time. Uh, they were ill-suited to the environmental hazards of the Suriname jungle, whereas the Black Rangers, the society troops, and the Maroons themselves, the rebels themselves, were all uh, already acclimatized to the area, and also many of them were Creole, or having been born to uh, the Americas. So they had already survived certain diseases and uh, knew about local knowledge about the uh, area. So to go into that um, in my paper, um, let me give you a little bit of backstory on the historiography of this particular uh, study of, of, of what I'm talking about. Um, there haven't been a whole lot of books written about the, well, the environmental ex exactly uh, uh, issues of that particular um, time in Suriname. But um, there have been several about the difference between the Rangers and, and the regiment. Um, Andre uh, R. M. Pakowski wrote uh, in the Maroon Leadership of Suriname State, 1760 to 1990. He mentions the Black Rangers, but he focuses mainly on those Black Rangers that mutinied and uh, ran off to the join the uh, Maroon Society uh, in Suriname. And uh, his main focus of his book is is talking about the Maroons uh, and how they succeeded against the, the col colonial uh, government, not uh, the Black Rangers and how they succeeded against the Maroons. So um, that was helpful in, in, in some aspects for my paper, but it was, uh, the focus was not where I wanted to go. So uh, then uh, Wilm S.M. Hugenbergen wrote uh, uh, The Bonnie Maroon Wars in Suriname and he kind of goes the opposite way from Pakowski, where Pakowski talks about the Maroon soldiers as heroes and doesn't mention much about the Black Rangers fighting against the Maroon people. It's mostly the mercenaries of, of Europe, is what the way he puts it. Uh, Hugenberg focuses more on the Plantation owners' version of things and, and how the Black Rangers were heroic and from, from, uh, formidable. Um, he also concludes that the uh, regiment... Uh, uh, in their campaign against Maroons, he said that uh, uh, he talks about how many were killed uh, in the forest and, and not very many, or the forest, the jungles, and not many actually made it back uh, to Holland or to Europe. Um, he also mentions that, uh, or actually, um, Frank Westerfield writes in the Friday Maroons of Suriname Slaves for four pence a day. He writes about how the Black Rangers were better suited in the regiment um, and uh, talks about how they were more motivated and more reliable. And I think part of that reliability, or at least to me, uh, it seems that the reliability was the fact that they were 
able to go out and, and fight, whereas some of the regiment were actually uh, sick most of the time. In uh, Stedman, Suriname, Life in the 18th Century Slave Society by the, the Prices, Richard and Sally Price, they actually talk about how um, the bulk, the work of the rangers were confirmed that the rangers were better suited to the task. And again, uh, not necessarily because of their ability to fight, but because they were not affected by the environmental hazards um, to the devastating degree that the regimental soldiers were. Um, to back this up, I used uh, uh, Mosquito Empires, Ecology and War in the Greater Caribbean from 1620 to 1914 by uh, J.R. McNeil. McNeil's uh, argument is that the mosquito-borne illnesses of the Americas were devastating to European soldiers um, and people and not to the Creole or local peoples. And the reason why it, he says that is because the uh, populations of America were born and raised with these diseases and the ones that actually survived the childhood from having these diseases or, or had immunities to the diseases were the ones that, that had more people. In other words, the Creoles were born of those people. And because of that, they had a far greater immunity to uh, yellow fever and malaria than others. He, he also goes on to say in his book that uh, that's why the, the Spanish held on to the Americas for so long is the fact that, that uh, all they had to do was hole up in their, uh, in their forts with local troops, themselves and a few local troops, and just wait out the invaders uh, to get sick from the, from the diseases and die. So um, most of the secondary literature that I read is a clear judgment that the rangers were much more effective than the uh, regiment was. And, that, and you can, don't have to go any further than uh, John Gabriel Sedman's account itself. Uh, he talks about, and he says uh, um, that the, the rebels uh, and the, the core of the Black Rangers seemed to be uh, sufficient, or not the rebels, excuse me, that the, uh, the home guard that were the, the society troops and the rebels were sufficient for the, uh, the guardian of the colony and didn't understand uh, why uh, that the Europeans were actually sent. He also writes that the um, um, that the uh, uh, troops were, uh, or excuse me, the Black Rangers were were much more um, hardy. We'll call it that way. Um, so going into the paper itself, off of the historic historiography, um, the main thesis of my paper is that. Environmental hazards caused far more casualties among the regimental uh, men than, than any encounters that they have with the rebels. It was due to the climate of hot and humid weather, made worse by the type of gear that they're wearing, and the fact that they were ill-prepared for any uh, uh, jungle environment problems like uh, the flora and the fauna, the insects, and mostly the diseases of, of the area. That's what it's really hampered them. So I guess my thesis would be, would nail it down, would be that the regiment uh, was taken down or was not as effective as the rangers due to the fact that they didn't have any local knowledge, that they were not resistant to those diseases, that's the main one, and that they uh, um, weren't prepared for the heat, nor did they try to acclimatize. So. Environmental hazards caused far more damage, like I said, and the, part of that reason was how they were dressed. The, uh, we'll start there. The Marines were dressed, or the regiment was dressed in long pants, shirts, long jackets. They carried equipment. Um, Stedman actually writes and says that the, the dress of our Marines was a blue turned up coat with scarlet, uh, short jackets, leather caps. They carried muskets, sabers, pistols, a large wallet, which is like a knapsack. Um, their hammocks over their shoulder, other shoulder, uh, and they wore trousers and check shirts and short linen frocks. So uh, they're pretty, even though it was linen and, and, and lighter materials, it was still fully dressed. Whereas the uh, rangers uh, were dressed um, nearly, nearly naked, only a set of trousers and very light equipment. And I'll show you the uh, two pictures I'm using. I'll get that to come in. Here's in a comparison between the two. You can see the ranger over here. He's uh, basically in a loincloth. Actually, it looks like he's wearing a very, very light, thin pair of pants or trousers. You see him tied off at the knees there. He's very light. He's not wearing any kind of shirt. He's a very, a very light looking cap, whereas the uh, soldier's wearing leather, a coat, a shirt, a pair of pants, hose, and, and boots. 
and also heavy equipment across him and a belt of leather along with a sword and pistol and everything else. So uh, very ill suited for the jungle, whereas the, uh, the uh, um, ranger was suited for the jungle. So uh, going into that further, not only do you have that, this exasperates their heat and the stamina in the heat due to what they're wearing. They also, when they first got there, spent some time just laying around getting drunk and converting with the, the locals instead of actually going out and uh, um, drinking water and working in the heat to get accustomed to it, which is uh, being in the military, that's what we do now. We try to acclimatize to an area we're at by slowly working up to a level of exercise in this heat and maintaining hydration. So this is something they didn't do. They immediately started drinking, which is... Uh, is bad for the, uh, it might be good because of the water they have there, it might be horrible to drink, so therefore you drink alcohol, but alcohol and the heat it, it do not mix, so, and it helps, it does the opposite effect for acclimatizing. But um, also, the climate itself, I mean, many people have warned about the climate, uh, a local plantation owner, a coffee plantation owner warned them, saying that the, that be upon your guard, the climate, the climate will murder you all. It's a uh, point that Stedman makes in his, uh, account. The rangers also knew how to regularly swim and cool off this way and while avoiding the alligators and this is some of that local knowledge I was talking about how they had it that and they tried to impart it upon the rangers or the regiment and, and some of them listened. Um, Stedman for instance would, was told by a, uh, a uh, uh, older ranger that he should strip his down to his bare feet while he's on the deck of the ship and the barges and walk around to toughen him up. So just in case he needed to be in the jungle, he would have tough soles of his feet when his boots rotted off or when he didn't have boots so that he could run around in the jungle without being hurt by the, the thorns. And that's, a, that's an interesting point. It's part of that local knowledge that they needed to impart to, to help them uh, survive in the jungle. Um, they also told them that, that they prefer to go naked or, or nearly naked and it, it allows the body to breathe. The, as the body needs water, it also needs air, as one of the, uh, the uh, um, rangers had told them. So uh, that's part of it, again. Uh, while they were there, they also uh, did some patrolling in the jungles. Um, there was some, uh, well, they were getting eaten alive while in the, in the jungles through, through, uh, through the bugs. So uh, at some point, uh, the colonel decides that uh, because the, of the wetness, the fact that the, the boots and clothes rot off them, they were getting trench foot from the wetness of their feet for swelling. There's a couple of mentions in his diary about the people's uh, feet swelling. Uh, they also kind of injuries, anything that had a broken skin would immediately get infected. So they were having problems there. They were suffering many losses through that and all because they were tromping through the jungles. So uh, at some point, also along the way they're, they're meeting Ringworm, leeches, mosquitoes, lice, bats, etc. are getting eaten alive by the bugs. So um, at some point, the, uh, the colonel decides that they need to go onto the barges to escape some of the problems. Uh, unfortunately, um, all it does is it, it puts them out to where everybody can see them and also doesn't give them any respite from the, uh, from the uh, mosquitoes. And going into that, the mosquitoes... Uh, more than likely, there were, uh, or undoubtedly, included the Aedes aegypti, which is the mosquito that carries malaria. Um, uh, and uh, we know that they're being bitten, and if there's even 1% have carried this uh, uh, of the Aegyptes, uh, or excuse me, the aegypti type Aedes mosquito, um, they're going to get uh, a possibility of getting malaria. And um, that goes into what... Uh, McNeil said in the Mosquito Empires about them not having immunity to it. And Stebbin writes about um, the mosquitoes that were a constant nuisance everywhere. He says uh, at one point, uh, and hands were entirely spotted over like skin of a leopard, occasionally by a myriad of gnats and mosquitoes or flying clouds, which had kept me company all night. And like I said, undoubtedly, the men that were dying from fever, and, and Stebbin himself gets sick several times, um, uh, this came from more than likely the uh, the vector was uh, the mosquito, and they're getting malaria, which would give them bouts of sickness, and give them fever, and then the heat, um, and not being able, having a whole lot of fresh water to drink, um, drinking alcohol again, this would cause attrition through them, and they would lose a lot of soldiers. Another reason why the Maroons 
and the rangers were better suited for the time, area because they were not dying in large numbers due to uh, illnesses like the, uh, like the um, um, regiment was. So they had lost more than 25% of their uh, losses or, uh, in just a few months uh, from, from disease and, and fever and things like that. Um, so they actually, um, disease and, and other uh, uh, environmental problems actually caused more damage than they did when they finally did meet the Maroons. They did actually have encounters with the Maroons, and uh, even though they could have had the same difficulty in this ambush, um, just as if they had been somewhere else in a bog that wasn't in the jungle, I think that perhaps the, I'm referring, of course, to the uh, Lieutenant Leper uh, incident, where Lieutenant Lever's men were, were uh, crossing a river up to their shoulders because they knew the enemy was nearby and they were trying to get to them. And the 31 of them were all killed. And they were up to their armpits in, in, in this water trying to get across. And then, of course, they, they didn't have any chance to shoot back. So and my argument is, yes, this could have happened anywhere, but it was due to the fact they had no local knowledge of the area. They were frustrated. They were being eaten alive. People were drop, dropping left, left and right. So this young officer makes a mistake and commits his troops where he would not, may not have done if he had been somewhere else. So, yes, it could have happened anywhere, but I think that it was uh, uh, compounded with all these other issues that were happening at the time. So, um, so yeah. But um, they go to, uh, like I said, they went onto the barges, and that did not help. They still kept getting bitten by insects. So they just don't have as many of the environmental issues now that they're on the water, but they still are getting bitten by alive by the insects, and they're still losing men and uh after only a couple of months on the water stedman's force of 65 gets reduced at only 20 left due to people dying he said uh and he describes his men at one point as a band of scarecrows that could have disgraced a garden or field of any farmer in england among the society captain named larcher who declared he came never combed shaved or watched or shifted and even took off his boots until they were all rotted from his body uh, again shows the environmental um hazards that they, they reached so, in conclusion, what I'm saying is that uh, the Black Rangers were better suited for jungle warfare, uh, as were the uh, Maroons also. Um, sending this uh, regiment in there to quell the Saber Revolt was unnecessary. The local governor did not want them. They felt they might stroke trouble, but mainly because they were ill-equipped. They had no uh, immunities to the diseases. Many of them died because of that. The heat, the humidity, and greater toll did a greater toll to them than the, the national revolting slaves. So uh, if the Europeans had, and, and this is, I know we're not supposed to look ahead if something had been different, that kind of thing, but uh, if something had been different, if the Europeans had increased their rangers' numbers, provided them with better supplies and, and uh, equipment, better weapons, perhaps a, a, it would have been a little more lasting result than sending a group of men, about 1,100 of these regimental soldiers in there uh, over a five-year period uh, and only have only a handful come back. And that was due to environmental issues, not the Marines themselves. Thank you.